Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Rami, and if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to join the family. If you are new here, I am a nurse transitioning to medical school, so that is why I have this lab coat on. I just got it in the mail and I was trying it on, so I thought I might as well just keep it on for this video. Here it is, it's so cute. I had a dress on because I was just at church, but I saw this outside and I was so excited to put it on. Um, it's kind of long actually. So we are supposed to have one lab coat or a white coat for labs and they will provide us with another lab coat. So I guess we're gonna have two lab coats um, to switch out so we can wash and wear them. As you guys can tell from today's video, it is going to be all about how I went from rejected to accepted to medical school. And if you guys are not new here and you guys have followed along my journey, you guys know that I have been trying to get into medical school for four years now. And I finally got that acceptance and I'll be starting in a few short weeks. So I got a few comments asking what I did to improve my application for the cycle um, and just kind of how I went from rejected to accepted. So I'm just gonna give you guys a few of my tips about how I got accepted into this cycle. So if you're interested in watching, stay tuned. So if you guys didn't know from my past videos, I had about an average GPA and a really low MCAT score that I'm going to be doing a score reveal in the next couple of videos. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm just gonna be talking about my tips that I did over the past four years to help me get accepted into medical school. So you guys know I'm a nurse and I've been working as a nurse for the past four years since I graduated with my bachelor's in nursing. I got a lot of clinical experience and clinical exposure as I was working on my application. So I applied every single year since 2017 until 2020. So my final year applying was 2020. So I applied every single year since then. So of course I got lots of hours working full time as a nurse. I got at this point over 7,000 clinical hours as a nurse. And before I was working as a nurse, when I applied in 2017, I was a patient care tech or CNA without the certification. Um, so when you finish fundamentals of nursing, if you guys are nursing students, out there you guys are able to work as a patient care tech or a multi-skilled worker there's different names for it similar to what a CNA does in a hospital or a clinic or nursing home anywhere they hold that position you are able to work after you finish fundamentals of nursing they will let you apply and work at that job I was a patient care tech for about two years and by the time I applied in 2017 I was finishing up my second year as a patient care tech and I worked in a hospital on a med surge ortho PCU unit and just built my clinical experience and built my hours doing that. There are of course many other options to build your clinical experience as a scribe. You can be an EMT, a paramedic. There are lots of different ways you can get that clinical experience and exposure. And I highly would recommend that if you don't have any clinical experience and your stats are on the low side to get as much clinical experience as possible. The second thing I did to help my application look better, build up my application, make it stronger for the next cycle was work on research. So in 2017, when I first applied, I only had one research experience. So by the time I had applied in 2020, I had three research experiences. Um, one of them I worked on for about a year and another one I worked on for about six months. They were very diverse. One was working with laboring women. What ways could women labor faster and more efficiently? And my other six month experience was working with natural antibiotics in the environment. So I thought that one was really interesting. Lots of people ask me, how do I get research experience? Where do I get it from? A good place to start is with your science professors at school. Um, they may have research that they're working on or they may know someone that has some science research that they are working on. So that is a really good place to start. That's where I went to get my antibiotic research with natural antibiotics. I just went to my old undergrad science professor who was also my advisor um, for my pre-med side and he helped me get that experience. Next, I would just do a Google search, try to look at research um, that's in your area. Lots of hospitals or medical schools or just medical areas around you may have research and they're looking for people to help out with that research. And you can also get paid for that research as an intern. So there are lots of different ways to get research. So I would just check out those examples and try to get research that way. My third tip to improving my application from rejected to accepted is 
work on your personal statement guys my first personal statement in 2017 was absolute trash it was really bad now that i look at it i didn't even look at examples i literally just wrote up why i wanted to be a doctor and i don't think i was able to put on paper exactly my thoughts of why i wanted to be a doctor it was literally the worst personal statement ever i don't even want to think about it but as the years went on i really had time to think about exactly why i want to be a doctor working as a nurse really changed my perspective on why i wanted to be a doctor it really helped build and grow my desire to become a doctor and i definitely put that in my personal statement with my nursing experience for this cycle it was the most i ever spent working on a personal statement i think i worked about three months on it which of course you guys don't have to work on it that long but i made draft after draft showed it to friend after friend made them proofread made them see if there was a good flow to it if it caught their attention in the first paragraph i really wanted to make my personal statement perfect um and catered to me as well and make it unique so i looked at a lot of different people's um, examples on youtube um, and just listen to them read their personal statement of people who got accepted and i really looked at their examples and kind of like the flow they used which was captivating first paragraph and i just really noticed how much they made it flow and made it unique and i loved seeing other people's perspectives and that helped me build my personal statement so i really think my personal statement was an attention grabber from the beginning and i just really loved how it all came together and by the end i was very confident when i submitted it so my recommendation is to do the same thing and look at other people's personal statements um, and think about the ideas of why you want to be a doctor make bullet points or take notes on it and then just make a beautiful personal statement based off of all those ideas and make sure it flows and just make sure other people see it too because all the individuals on the admissions committee are people with unique personalities perspectives so make sure you do that with your family members and friends because they all have unique personalities and perspectives and they may see something that one other person didn't so just make sure you pass it along to family members and see what they think tell them to give you a really honest opinion because that's what i made them do for me don't just tell me it's beautiful and it's great tell me what i need to work on to make it good for everyone not just one person i think that really helped me get my interview into medical school. That brings me to my next tip, which is practice, practice, practice for your interview. This is the one and only time they're gonna be able to see you. Clearly they like you because of your application and they see what they like on paper, but they really have to like you as a person. Now I did a Zoom interview because of COVID. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna be this upcoming cycle. I definitely made sure to dress right, um, my background. I made sure that it was clean, um, bright, natural light. If it happens to be Zoom interviews this cycle, I just made sure that I was very confident and I practiced, practiced, practiced like crazy. So I'm gonna link a book down below that really helped me. I think it's Desai's MMI interview because I had an MMI interview. I can make a video about my interview experience, but Dr. Desai's MMI interview book, I read that entire thing and they have awesome ethical questions and scenarios that interviewers could ask you. So I made my friends and family members just quiz me like crazy on all the days leading up to it. So on the day of my interview, I was extremely confident with all the questions they gave me and I was easily able to think of answers right off the bat because they build off questions from that initial question. Just having so many questions and having your family and friends build questions off of that and make up questions really helps you think on the spot. Whenever my interview finished, I really felt like I had nailed it. I think you can say all you want on paper, build up your application, make it really strong. But if you're not a strong, confident person like you seem on paper, that may hinder your acceptance. Really work on your interview leading up to it, your interview practice. Um, you can practice in front of a camera and watch yourself, your facial expressions because since mine was Zoom, I really had to practice looking at the lens and not at myself on the screen like I'm doing right now. I really just wanted to glance up and look at myself, but I made sure to look at the lens to make it look like I was looking at the interviewer directly, like I was there almost. So um, whatever you get, Zoom interview or in-person interview, make sure you are confident that day. I know there are always gonna be some nerves, 
um, but just practice 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 and you will be okay with all their questions my next tip is a simple one um, I retook my MCAT three times for score improvement and they really want to see when you take that MCAT that the score is going up and not down so I had a really really low score that I mentioned in the beginning but my three scores were all an improvement so I just want to say if you have a low score and you aren't getting acceptances the MCAT is a beast of a test my NCLEX was fantastic compared to that. I felt confident on my NCLEX. The very first time I took the MCAT, I barely studied for it. I didn't know how much of a beast it would be, but the second and third time, especially the third time, I cracked down and studied as much as I could while working full time, but make sure you study for that. I get a lot of comments on what I used for my MCAT score. I use lots of different materials. I had a personal tutor. I did Kaplan. The best resource I had that really helped me understand the content of the MCAT was the self-study exam crackers course. And that was the cheapest option they had. You just get the books and you follow like a self-study lesson plan for over like a couple of months, I believe. I think that really, really helps me with score improvement and just understanding the MCAT in general because don't underestimate the MCAT, it is hard. Another thing that helped me with my application improvement and getting a stronger application was volunteering at multiple places. Bonus points if they are healthcare related. I volunteered at multiple health fairs. They provided free healthcare. Um, for the community so i did a few of those i did them as a nursing student and also as a nurse and just got to help my community out in different communities my community and um, places a few hours away um, whenever i was able to and i took pto for that to really build up my resume and also get lots of experience in different communities so I also was able to use that in essays. I was able to use that in my answers, in my interview. If you can't volunteer at health fairs, you can probably volunteer at the hospital. Try to make it as health or medical related as possible. If you can't, just try to have volunteer experience in general. Um, you can get volunteer experience anywhere, at a local church, at school. There are plenty of ways to volunteer. You just have to go out and look for it and make sure that you build up those hours. Um, there is no minimum or maximum amount of hours to volunteer. Just make sure you have plenty of volunteer experiences to list on your application and that will definitely strengthen your application and make it a better application. My last tip is, and I think this tip helped me a lot, is to do a post back program or master's program in um, biomedical sciences, public health, Things like that will really help boost your resume and boost your GPA for medical school. As you guys know, I did a master's in biomedical sciences, which is one year, and I believe a master's in public health is two years, but both of those master's degrees have classes that are similar to medical school. So medical schools can see that you can handle the rough curriculum, especially if you have a lower GPA or lower MCAT. If your grades are good in this master's program, they will definitely see that you can handle the rigorous curriculum of medical school because we have classes like anatomy, we had sell Malek. Difficult class like that we had to take in a master's program. I think that definitely helped me. Um, even though my grades were about average, I didn't get all A's of course, but I think that on top of the other things I did for my application definitely helped strengthen me as an applicant and helped me get into medical school. So if all of those other tips that I gave you are not doable or feasible, or you've done all those things and you still haven't got in, definitely try applying for a post back program because that will definitely help your GPA and help you get into medical school. I hope this video helped you. I just wanna say, don't give up guys. I took four years to get in. I think I said this quote before, but you can either be 30 and a doctor or 30 wishing that you had applied again. So keep applying if that is your dream, if that is your goal. But yeah, please leave me a comment if you guys have any questions at all. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to follow my journey and join the family. And don't forget to like this video. You guys got this. I believe in you. Have a great week. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Yeah.